Okay. So the last class we finished up to verse number um, 31. Mm. And we saw that verse number 30 is the crux of the Karma Yoga in the whole of uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, where um, Krishna um, stressed about sanyas, Sanyasya, mm, Adhyatma Chetasa, Sarva Karmani. Sarva Karmani included the, the, mainly the palam and the action and however we want to plan and execute it and up to completion, everything nirashir nirmamo bhutva vigata jvara with no tension. And so that shloka is the, the complete essence of karma yoga for all the karma yogi. And then Krishna also said in the verse number 31 that this matam, when we said matam, as we said, this is my teaching to you. Teaching to you, my um, matam also means it, this is my complete understanding, you know, and also the uh, you, your abhipraya. You know, when we say my opinion, not just an opinion, you know, this is my concluded essence of the teaching. Concluded essence of the teaching of karma yoga. And, to sim and for simplified execution. That's why Krishna also said that with that Shraddha and the Anasu Yantaha, that is what is very important. And they both go hand in hand. And I just would like to again stress that word, Anasuya. You might have all heard about even that lady Anasuya, the Patiprata of Atri Maharishi. Right. So the word anasuya happens from the word that one, one who does not have asuyai. So what is asuyai? Asuyai means para sugune dosha drishti asuyai. Meaning to say in others, even good actions, good qualities to see a flaw, to keep on complaining about or finding fault. Finding fault in others, good guna, in good qualities. Ah, that is what is called asuyai. And sometimes it could be hidden. And But so, na asuya, anasuya. That is why she is called anasuya. When all the three Bhagavan said how she should serve the food, she made them into a children. Right. So that is why rightly fits. So whenever we call this fit Anasuya, you think about that Anasuya of Atri Maharishi. We will know. And so that is what Bhagavan said. In my word, that Shatta meaning to say that Purva Vishwasa. Uh, here Vishwasa, faith, devotion, bhakti, everything is very much stressed. Along with logic. But the Vishwasa, hypothetical may be at the beginning. But then it is concluded with the, your logical observation and execution of that teaching. Without execution of that, you will never going to get that proven logic. Because if you are only going to be dealing, dealing with logic, it, is, it becomes only an instruction but never becomes a conviction. For you to get convicted, you must have that Shraddha as well. Shraddha means Guru va Vedanta Vakyeshu Vishwasaha. That's why I want to bring that word Vishwasa. Guru Shastra Vakyeshu Vishwasaha Shraddha. So even today, right, whenever you go to analyze something to execute, you put an hypothetical statement. So when we see V. Raman, when he wanted to see the sky is blue, he said, no, sky is not blue. He went into a hypothetical statement and then he proved it. So for anything for us to, and also for that, so you have to execute it to actually have that complete Vishwasam and then see the benefits of the Karma Yoga. That's why Bhagavan wanted to stress about Shatta and Anasuyantaha and such person who then follows my teaching in the above Karma Yoga. Even te pi karma bihi muchante. Karma bihi muchante. We need to say that becomes a Jeevan Mukta. Because only a Jeevan Mukta can completely um, uh, relinquish all the karma. And he says he leads him up to that moksha. Not just the first step. From the first step to last step, this karma yoga me, me, paves the path. So Krishna, that's what he said in that. And then the subsequent sloka today, 
will be also about why the Shraddha and that Asuye comes in some person and how to remove that obstacle. Hmm. That obstacle is, Krishna says, yes, that is there. I can't, I can't negate it. So Asuya is not jealous. In some book it has come, it comes as a jealous, which is not jealous. That jealous is a different meaning, but Asuya, this is actual meaning. So now let us do the, uh, from uh, verse number 32. Um, so Sumati ji, you want to chant after me, if you don't mind? Yes. Okay. Very good. Na nutishtanti me matam. Na nutishtanti me matam. Na nutishtanti me matam. Sarvajnana vi mudam stan. Sarvajnana vi mudam stan. Sarvajnana vi mudam stan. Vidhinashtana chetasaha. Vidhinashtana chetasaha. Vidhinashtana chetasaha. Very good. So here Bhagavan says that particular person who does not, he finds in the fault in the Krishna, in the teaching here, and Krishna condemns that and then goes about this. This is one particular place where Krishna admonishes that particular person who who is bereft of all these things. He says, Tu, but you know, Arjuna, Tu, Ye. Who is that Ye? The person who has got that Asuye, or that person who has got that not a Vishwasam, or the person who is that cynical with an opinion of not following the Krishna's teaching uh, with a, with a critic, with a not a critical, with a Kudarka Buddhi. Ye. Uh, Asu yantaha. See? In fact, abhyasu yantaha. So it's just not just as asu yai. Abhi asu yantaha, abhyasu yantaha. See, there in the previous one, he is a anasu yantaha. This fellow is a abhyasu yantaha. So it's just not only asu yant, but is abhi as, as, so abhi plus asu yant become abhyasu yantaha. Yant sandhi. Uh, abhi plus asu yantaha become abhyasu yantaha. So that means he's totally finding fault in anything or whomsoever says whatever you, you have to give him any book, anything to teach or anywhere to go, he will find a fault. His, his, his opinion is always to find the fault. Dosha drishti. That's it. That is the only thing that he has got. That abhyasu yantaha ye tu to, to, but yeah, this fellow who is Abhyasu Yantaha uh, may, that is Krishna's, yetat, this Karma Yoga teaching that in the Matam, yetat, Matam, so 5 and 6, yetat, Matam, uh, uh, na anushtishtanti, because he is a He's got completely the far one. So he, this um, uh, person, he, being a very critical and a very, this person, maybe I told, you know, he's not having a shraddha and everything. He, na anutishtanti. He does not want to execute anything even. Upon, even though you don't believe, at least take one step and see. One day you try it out to see. You don't, no, even that he does not want to do. He neither wants to do nor wants to listen. That's what Krishna wants to say. Na anutishtanti does not want to move one inch in that. Why? So he says, you know, that um, nine, okay. Tan, um, this person, yeah, this tan, this, this, this person who has got this one, tan achetasaha. Why achetasaha means he is the one who does not even trust himself. That's the main thing. The trust is not in the outside because he is not able to trust himself. And why? So his yukti, the chetasaha means in that his mind and it is in the faculty, achetasaha. It is not in the right direction. Hmm. So avivekinaha. 
Achetasaha. Uh, this Achetasaha, this so his mind is also senseless and completely corrupted because there is an internal conflict going on. What will I happen if I teach this one? Is this really true? If I do, then will I fall? Or if I fall, will somebody lift me? Even if lift me, or is that person has got another inner purpose to do? Maybe he is just only wanting to um, take something out of me. You know, all those sort of things you can... That kind of a corruption mind, that is what achetasaha. Uh, so achetasaha, uh, and also why is this sarvajnana vimudhan? Number 11, sarvajnana vimudhan. Apa, okay, he's got no spiritual knowledge, not even the materialistic world, this guy is able to progress. Because he doubts everything around him. Not the elders and everything. So sarvajnana vimudhan. Neither from the materialistic knowledge, nor from the religious knowledge, and from even a spiritual uh, knowledge. From all aspects is a sarvajnana vimudhan. And how Krishna says is, you, Vidhi, that you know Arjuna, he is a nashtan. Sarvajnana vimudhan, nashtan Vidhi. You know him to be that he is a completely lost, he has lost the purpose of his existence, lost the purpose of his Purushartam, lost the purpose of his Janma, Janma Samjit, everything he has lost it. Such as this is so, in a very few instances, Krishna admonishes, condemns of certain aspects in teaching. This is one place he says. Because he says this is what happened. So the next few verses also is very nice to get that logic. Okay, Ganapati Ramji, you want to chant after me, please? Yeah? Are you there, Ganapati Ramji? Or I can okay. do it. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, okay, please do. Sadhusham Chetate Svasraha Sadhusham Chetate Svasraha Sadrisham Cheshta de Sasya Prakriter Yana Vana P. Prakriter Yana Vana P. Prakriter Yana Vana P. Prakatim Yanti Budani. Prakatim Yanti Budani. Prakatim Yanti Budani. Nikrahakim Karishati. Nikrahakim Karishati. Nikrahakim Karishati. Thank you, Ji. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. So, here there's a beautiful analysis which will come in this place. And you just, we have to get this sloka 33 in the right context. And in this context, certain definition of Adi Shankaracharya gives. We've been hearing this word Prakriti, Prakriti, Prakriti. And we somehow take it as some creation. But in this context, we should get the word meaning of prakriti very clearly. Okay. So what the, what the doubt there is, Arjuna thinks, but you know, Krishna, this is all your creation. So how come you are saying one person is kind of a anasu yantaha, ashadda, even Krishna, he does not have ashadda, whereas one person has shadda. And you know how these things are happening in the Krishna. So, you know, kind of there's a thing going on in Arjuna's mind. So can't you correct these people, bring them all into path? Something is happening. So, but Krishna is now going a little bit far beyond, you know, he's thinking the doubt, though Arjuna has not asked the doubt. Krishna is kind of planting the doubt and trying to answer that in this local. So what Krishna is trying to say, look, this, this, is, this is truly happening all the time. There are some people. So you may think, why? This is Bhagavan's word. How come this person is doing it? He says, you know why, Arjuna, these things are happening. Bhutani, in this creation, all, the, all this part of this creation, Bhutani, Prakritim Yanti. This one is the first sentence. Very important. Bhutani, all these uh, part and parts of the creation, good, bad, na, in between, sometime good, sometime bad, you know, whatever, whatever classification of all these people. Prakritim yanti. Yanti means this is where they go into. So there is something that in the creation they go into. 
So that means if I have to understand the prakriti in this uh, particular sentence, I will get the meaning of the word exactly yanti, where they all, yanti means that's where they all go into. Uh, so what Shankara says here, the prakriti definition, prakriti nama, prakrita dharma adharmadi samskaraha vartamana janmadavu Abhivyaktaha sab prakriti. I will repeat again. Afterwards, you can go and listen to this particular recording. Prakritir nama, this prakritir name, how in this context, Arjuna, you should take it is prakrita, that it is already been created. Prakrita, uh, that which is already created of dharma adharma, of dharma and adharma, the uh, samskaraha. From Purva Janmadi, from many, many birds that it has come in the same, in the same house. One person is Asuya, Asu, Anasuyantaha, one person is Ab Abhyasuyantaha. Because of that samskar. Bahu Janma Samskaraha, Vartamana, Janmadav Abhivyaktaha. When that person is born, Janma Adav Abhivyaktaha, that comes forth. That's so a person who is so good and having the shraddha, whatever you do, this person will never ever go into the adharma. But this person, so it is, the Bhagavan says, abhivyaktaha sa prakriti. So that prakriti, that samskara, so Krishna's meaning to say, he says, look, in this janma, there is certain thing that I can do, but there are certain things which is part of this creation, which cannot be corrected by me. That's a kind of an indirect meaning Krishna is saying. And he will again get into the right context in this because these are all beautiful portions of Gita. You will not forget, find it in any other chapters. And this gets an answer to a lot of our Christians sometimes. So please read this portion of Gita again and again as we do the Karma Yoga. So he says, Prakritim uh, uh, Sarva Bhutani Prakritim Yanti Yanti Jnanavanapi, Jnanavanapi, very big statement. Even the Jnani who has attained Mukti, maybe a, a break Sanyasi, Jnani, that's your Jnanavan, maybe that means who has, who has even attained a Jnanam, Jnanavanapi, Swasyaha Prakritehe Sadrisham Cheshtate, big statement. He's kind of put even a Jnani in this statement. He says, you know, Arjuna, even jnanavanapi, prakritehe swasyaha. Here, swasyaha means according to his swabhava. According to his swabhava, sadrsham cheshtate. Sadrsham, similarly only, he also goes into in his behavioral pattern. Cheshtate. Huh. So, in between these two, Nigraha Kim Karishyati means Nishedam. In these ones, what is there for me to correct or for you to correct? So this, this, this particular context may come to you like, you know, oh, that means everybody is kind of in their own Prakriti, that they are in the Swabhava. If they have to be, and they cannot be corrected, then what is the purpose of teaching? Krishna, this is a bit of a confusing. You are telling that there are some teachings, Shastra, Shraddha and everything. But then you are also saying there is some Prakriti, Swabhava and all those things, Samskara. Huh? Then what is the purpose of the teaching? What is the purpose of we coming into you to get and correct us? So you mean to say you can't correct me because I realize. So these doubts are coming in this, at this particular one, it should come. Then there is nothing wrong to come. So what the, from, that's what when we go out to listen to a lot of great saints uh, teaching and everything like Swami Omkaranda, what he really says is there are certain, even, even in uh, chapter number 18, Krishna will come. Why he is trying to do here is Krishna is coming to Swadharma. So just don't only concentrate on this shloka. This shloka is leading into your Swadharma in the Karma Yoga. 
When it comes to Swadharma, again in chapter number 18, Krishna will say, Swabhava jena kaunteya nibadda svena karmana. Swabhava jena kaunteya nibadda ha svena karmana. By your, your actions are bounded by your own Swabhava. Mm. So, in that, when he says here about jnani, meaning to say that, you know, Omkara very clearly said, you know, we, we sometimes we have a jnani, we go to, um, you know, Krishikesh, one Swamiji, because his mother has put him with chapati and everything, he may just run chapati, another person will have a rice, another person will have poha or something. It is, that is okay. It is just, it's not their desire or anything. It is just their nature of doing it. And in this, Nikraha Kim Karishyati means don't see the differences in these things. Take it from that particular angle, Krishna is saying. Okay, so Krishna is what he's really wanting to come there from there is there are the Swabhava, that is what is Swasyaha. Swasyaha means Swabhava. Hmm. Swabhava and also that because of the Swabhava, Sarvabhutani Prakriti Myanti. So in this prakriti is what is means all samskara, huh? and this samskara huh, in this kind of a cyclical nature of my um, certain inbound characteristics. How do I do the karma yoga and then get out of it? Is what Krishna's teaching is all about in this context, please. So we should not take the, the meaning that as if everything is kind of already programmed and destined to go in the dharma and dharma and that they cannot be changed. That is not the purpose of the teaching in this verse. That is why these are all very sukshma artham in this one. Okay. So what Krishna is really saying is, and then immediately he will come in the next sloka. Then you, then you will understand the particular um, context of what I said. So have you caught the correct context in this one? 33. This is the reason Krishna also said in this one, Prakritir guna sammudaha sajjantu gana karmasu thana krishna vidho mandan akrishna vin tichala yed. Nipo avana onnu kadukada. Celebrate on the Prakritila Pradam Panindrava. I want to pay Pandravanim in this one. What Krishna wanted to say was this is a karma yogi who is doing it with some purpose of fruits. Even with them, he is bound by that Sobhava. Leave for the time and krama to come and don't go when they disturb him. This is what he said. That is why in this karma yoga, Buddha, karma, here also he said, right? Na buddhi bedam janayet. So put all of them together here. That is what he told the other person that Jnani, the Abhidbam, Abhidbam Saga, Abhidbam Saga, don't go and confuse him. Right? And then here also he said, Prakritya Gunasam Mudaha Sajjantu. But in this one, Yetvya Abhyasu Yantaha Nanu Chandadi, Sarvajjana Vimuda. So we see the correlation there. This person is a Sarvajjana Vimuda, but everything is in this Prakriti. That's what Krishna is saying. Everything is in this Prakriti with that Samskara. But everything can be rectified. Everything can be followed through this teaching. That is also Krishna's teaching. How? That is what he will say in the subsequent verses. So what is the meaning of Nigraha Kim Karishyati? Nikraha means Nishedam, meaning to say what is there for you to condemn something Ah, this is um, um, what is there for you to condemn it totally, saying that this is a written off case or something like that. Why? Why? And so, meaning to say, in this Sarvajnana Vimudan stan, we, it's not a written off case, he's saying. Though is a Sarvajnana Vimudan stan, which is Nashtana Cheta Saha, though is a lost, lost completely from his Janma, um, what can I say, um, the purpose of his goal of life, he is bound by certain names of this and that can also be rectified. So you don't completely write off, is our actor saying. Nikraha Kim Karishyati is a question on Akshay, Ak Ak Patram took Arjuna. He's saying, do not totally write him off. Do not totally write him off. That's what is the main thing. Are you okay now, Shiba? I know you're mute, unmute, unmute. Unmute. Ah. Not fully understood. Um, 
ज्ञानवान अपि स्वस्या प्रकृते सदृशम श्रेष्ठते विकल्या सो नेक्स्ट ही सेस निग्रह किम करिष्यति या बिटवीन दीस टू व्हाट इज देयर फॉर यू टू काइंड ऑफ द सेम थिंग आई एम सेइंग द पर्पस ऑफ दिस वन इज डू नॉट um do not um nishedam means what's what shankara says nishedam means do not totally write off as if these cannot be that one is completely a gone case something like that i'm, I'm saying in our colloquial language okay do not write because that that in the subsequent verses krishna is going to say look there is this guna again the guna is underlying factors by which this has this has been uh, come um, the samskara has developed into certain stages of different yani and ajnani and the uh, avidvamsa when that uh, you are inborn that guna when that is recognized and then seen how this is your sense organs are all being drawn outside to the outside world when that is completely regulated and modulated this can be won over that is what is saying and that a totality a person cannot be totally kind of um, written off or can be condemned huh? so that is what krishna is coming to say it's a kind of a doubt because he said sarvajnana vimudan then one may arise okay if that is the case what is the purpose because krishna your teaching is for loka sangraham how do all the people then will have a path to come about to rectify such doubts krishna is saying this so in that is why in gita when we take one verse we must take it in totality and and the subsequent shlokas so when we come to the next one also you'll see more in there and as if to correct it again as if to correct it again now um, krishna says in verse so jay shri ji can you chant after me please sure abul ओके इंद्रिय सेंद्रिय स्यार्ते इंद्रिय सेंद्रिय स्यार्ते इंद्रिय सेंद्रिय स्यार्ते रागद्वेषौ व्यवस्थितौ रागद्वेषौ व्यवस्थितौ रागद्वेषौ व्यवस्थितौ तयोर नवशमा गच्छेत तयोर नवशमा गच्छेत तयोर नवसमागच्छेत तौ ह्यस्य परिपंथिनौ तौ ह्यस्य परिपंथिनौ त्यौ ह्यस्य परिपंथिनौ वेरी गुड वेरी गुड सो हियर कृष्णा सेस अगेन इन दिस होल्ड एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ क्रिएशन ऑफ व्हिच वी आर ऑल पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ हां द वे हाउ डस दिस भूतानी प्रकृतिम यांति मात्रास्पर्शास्तु कौंते ये शीतोष्ठ सुख दुख दाह आगमापाय नो अनित्या यू रिमेम्बर दैट चैप्टर स्लू दैट मात्रा आई टोल्ड यू राइट लम पृथिव्या सो ऑल दोस थिंग्स हाउ दिट द फाइव ऑर्गन्स आर रिलेटेड टू द फाइव प्रकृति इन द नेचर राइट सो इन दिस वन यू शुड वेरी क्लियर अंडरस्टैंड वर्ड नंबर 1 2 3 इंद्रियस्य इंद्रियस्यार्थ इनफैक्ट 2 1 3 इज अ कॉम्पाउंड वर्ड that should not be split so indriyasya indriyasya arthe meaning to say indriyasya and the first word indriyasya mean your sense organs of an individual of the uh, my indriyas means of my of my organs of touch organs of vision organs of hearing organs of smell and organs of taste all these indriyas okay and where do they go really to the external world indriyasya arthe Meaning to say, in the visual issue, in the external material world, because its consumption is mostly from outside. You have to see outside normally. We don't always see inside, though that is sometimes we do. So everything is in the external world. That is what is in this context of indriya sarte. In the external world, in that interaction between indriya sya and indriya sarte, the outside world. Krishna says, "Raga dvesha vyavastita." Raga meaning to say an attraction, a like, uh, a passion, uh, of of something that's very good, very pleasant, joyous, and dvesha 
that dislike, that something that you totally do not want it, a complete aversion, vyavastitao, meaning to say vyavahara stitihi, meaning to say there's a transactional um, action and reaction happening all the time. Between your, so that is what is the explanation of bhutani prakritim yanti. Hmm. So why? Because of the indriyasya, Indriyasyarte, when there, there is a vyavaharam happening, that is vyavastitaha, when there is some transaction happening all the time, like I am now talking, you are now listening, or you know, you look at um, in a hall like 10 different people, you may like one color, the other person may like other color, or you know, you may like one combination, one person may like other combination, but there is no set good combination or a bad combination. But all these things come about because of the raga and dvesha of the individual person. Of a like and a dislike. Okay. And that is there. That, that is a Krishna says, these are the true part of the nature. Raga dvesha. But he says, but you know Arjuna, tayoho, tayoho means raga dvesha yoho. Of this raga, that is this passion and your likes and dislike, tayoho vasham na agache. But you don't become the slave to this particular one. Tayoho vasham na agache. You don't get into the clutches of this particular transaction. Because the minute you get into the clutcher of their vasham, then he, he means because asya, asya paripantinao. Asya paripantinao means you are jnanas, jnanasya, jnani naha. So a jnani, a viveki, he is going on a panti means a, a path. You are going in this path of your moksha. But these raga dvesha, as you see, as you hear and everything in every day and every morning to evening, they are the one who are like the uh, uh, decoy, the highway of decoy tree, robbery. Hari panti now. They are like a highway decoys. They would certainly take you away, distract you away, and you will forget the path that you were supposed to go in the morning. In the night, you are completely come to a different path, and then you are just fall on the bed and seeing what a mistake, what a bad day I have done. Something like that. Paripanti now. And that is how you are being taken away from the path of the moksha. Huh. So, Krishna, again, that is why he wants to get into this particular one of the inner faculties. Again, every time when he comes to the teaching. And he wants you to recognize this particular one because there is also some samskara within us, every one of us. And having that modulated, these are the real, because your sense organs are your real help. They are, he would say again in chapter number six again, these are your greatest friend and these are your greatest enemies too. And how to make it as your enemy is again, it's in your own hands. I have given you all the faculties. I have given you the teaching. But might be mindful of this prakriti. Because they would often certainly pull you in the wrong direction. Hari panti now. Okay. And how to not, how not to get into this one. Krishna is giving a very simple teaching here. Very nice. Same as uh, Ma, uh, Ma, Mayi Sarvani Karmani. 35 is a beautiful teaching. Ah. Uh, uh, Sumati ji, you want to chant after me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha very good. Swadharme nidhanam shreyaha. Swadharme nidhanam shreyaha. Swadharme nidhanam shreyaha. Paradharmo bhaya bahaha. 
परधर्मो परधर्मो वेरी गुड थैंक यू नाउ दिस अगेन दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्सेस आर अ बिट वी हैव टू टेक इन द राइट कॉन्टेक्स्ट नाउ इन दिस वर्स नंबर सो वी सेड अबाउट द हाईवे डेकोरेटरी द द सेंस ऑर्गन्स एंड द कर्म योग in all these things krishna again he says come back to now in this verse to say you know arjuna even though this is happening the raga dvesha we are not able to we are always trying our best but we need an easy margam rather than fighting without yes i know because what happens when there is a highway dakonity what do we do we either avoid him or we have to have something to rip, ripple him right that is what we do but can can we fight with this fellow really no it's there is no but we don't want to again get into the clutches so krishna he says the easy way for you arjuna in this along with my teaching follow your swadharma by you following your swadharma you are aligning to your swabhava when he said about that prakriti and that swadharma to swabhava when it is all aligned together you certainly come to your karma yogi that is the simplest teaching in this one again now the so we need to now understand swadharma in this verse to get that alignment correct now again i'm going to go by bashyam and also going to go in this one as what um, krishna meant in this meaning and adi shankara meant this meaning and also all the big teachers in this when it means swadharma here arjuna krishna very clearly means about the varna ashramam only varna and ashramam brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra um, varna ashrama all the brahmacharya um, kumar everything one is by birth which is varna ashrama by the stages of one's life when that is aligned so in this context krishna is saying look arjuna you are a born kshatriya and kshatriya dharma is your swadharma at this stage and abide by that swadharma and you will and execute this karma yoga in this in this battlefield and that is your shreya in that you will certainly get your moksha okay so that's a direct teaching to arjuna now how do we take it into the modern days our our um, but we say karma yoga is applicable in all times for all people and everywhere how do we apply it to this our stage into our perspective is the greatest challenge and so really we can can we put that swadharma but we can't put swadharma again into say today there are 7.54 billion people we can't have 7.54 billion because that then somebody it needs to be defined right though swabhava is different so the only thing that which is closest so today can that all be really be done it is not possible nobody can uh, um, uh, you know agree today that you can really practice all the varnasha as said by all the big teachers so then how do we correlate it to this particular shloka in bhagavad gita let us again analyze this particular one then we will see more so what krishna says here we haven't gone into the essence of it anyway so what krishna says he says swanasht swa anushtitat paradharmat so there is two things okay first we'll go swa anushtitat by your self um, abiding by a paradharma of another person's dharma or another dharma take it as paradharma another dharma okay take it at us woman let us take it as paradharma of someone else dharma or some some other uh, some other dharma which is not truly yours it's because swa anushtita so in comparison panchama vyakti swa anushtita paradharma in in comparison to you executing of somebody else duty or a task mm, स्वधर्मो विगुण स्वधर्म ईवन दो यू सी युअर ओन ड्यूटी गुड बी विगुण विगुण मीन दट इट वॉज लॉट ऑफ फॉल्ट इन दिस नॉट विशेष गुण विगत गुण मीन यू टू से इट कुड बी हैविंग सम दोषम यू मे युअर ओन कर्म कुड बी टू बी अपियरिंग एस इट इज नॉट दट बेस्ट सूटेड फॉर यू 
it is still shreyan it is what it is best for you so even though you could be a great expert in executing somebody else dharma which you think is much better than your own dharma though you think it is having a lot of fault but your dharma is what is shreyan of in comparison to them your dharma even though appearing as if so i'm going literal feeling then we'll go detail even though it appears to be having some flaw is the one that is the best suited for you that is the one that will give you the shreyas margam for the moksha margam hmm and krishna that is one particular sentence there and he says swadharma nidanam shreya and in that swadharma itself nidanam you breathe up to the last that is what is going to give you the good samskara in this birth if i am born if i want to make my janma a sapalyam into the next janma if i want to place the right seed that means in your swadharma in that itself nidanam nidanam means your last breath shreya and para dharma bhaya that second line okay the third line is para dharma bhayavaha that other dharma the other dharma that if you are going to abide bhayavaha that is going to be of such a dreadful nature in this bhayavaha also means that it is going to give you in the after life a big naraka or in a later life you are going to have much more difficulty even to come back into that good path that you are even though having now now so now you have got the essence of this particular meaning and so let us analyze it a little bit more because this demands a little bit of analysis hmm. so three sentences are made even though you arjuna so nowadays in our context let us assume that there is because today dharma itself if you analyze there is what's called rashtriya dharma the dharma that is for people in say australia as a rashtriya dharma is for people in different from india people from say for example if i have to pay up i'm earning some money my dharma is say for example india so australia maximum taxation is say 35% i have to give the 35% in india it could be maybe 20% or somewhere else so that is a dharma if i doing if i'm handling this particular earnings in a different way that dharma will not because that is one of the main thing we all do in our living home livelihood so in our rashtriya dharma there is a lot of difference in which varies between country to country okay so that is one thing and then again by the birth and everything there is there is some duty that is born with you and today because you really cannot there is no, nobody can say because in those days the father was doing a particular profession so the son also followed the profession and it was all there that is all gone in most of the place so that was though it was feasible up to probably 100 200 years ago but today the such such a thing doesn't exist it is not possible and also the um, the so there is nothing like to truly like a kshatriya or a vaishya or a particular shudra or anything like that and that becomes against the rashtra dharma imagine the complication right so then they would come into lot of discrim so these are the portions where the other people from the gita uh, the people take this ones and put it in the drawn context say do krishna uh, is uh, um, completely even uh, dis um, uh, admonishing the persons who don't uh, follow these ones so how does krishna says yes krishna did say at this time in at this time it means in this teaching to arjuna about certainly about by birth of brahmin kshatriya because that is what was applicable at that time to arjuna but from the teachings perfect of what we can do today um, we have to only take it to the contextual environment that we are placed in to say look this is the duties that is bound with me from my born and when as we grow older and older we would certainly recognize our samskar and by recognition of your own samskar to the environment and to the best effort of whatever we do that's what all the great teachers and mahans like you know some yomkarananda and so many other um, dan the saraswati everybody in their book and even in their teachings when i have heard that's what they say and this is probably one of the main reason as well we never had in sanatana dharma conversion 
So today, if you take it as Swadharma as religion, say for example, just I'm saying religion. Okay, so because from a worshipping, from a prayer point of view, you take it as Swadharma because, you know, for a Swadharma, for a Muslim could be you have to pray five times, that is a Swadharma. Right? And, um, and for a Christian, maybe on a Sunday morning, he has to go or uh, say he has to have fast Lent now, you know, because it's Easter time. He may be having a 40 days Lent now before Easter. That is his Swadharma. Or maybe in a Ramzan, he is having a fast. So, you know, these are all different Swadharma that you cannot. So, that Swadharma comes to religion. So, if you take religion as Swadharma again, Krishna's teaching here was that even though you find your Dharma, meaning to say, because Dharma is nowadays taken as religion as well. That means your other religion may appear very good. Do not go then. So the people take, people also take this one as saying that, yes, that is why conversion of religion from A to B to B to C or C to A is not anywhere seen in, in, in our scriptures. This is also one way of taking this particular verse. But, the, but really, do we have to go that religion into everything into this? Really may not be applicable. And here is again, if you have to link it with uh, verse number 18, because days are changing, every minute is changing. So we can have to, there in Krishna, we, we have to say again, adharma, then so Krishna wants to take in that place, adharma as a paradharma. Hmm. There with the Thomas of Buddhi, he said, Adharmam Dharma Mitiye, Manya Se Tamasa Prata, Sarvartan Viparitan Scha, Buddhi Saparta Thomasin. The Thomas of Buddhi person takes Adharma as his Swadharma or as a Dharma. Thomas of Prata, Sarvartan Viparitan. Whatever you tell him, he will only take in a Kudarva Bukti and take it out. And that is a Thomas of Buddhi, he says. It can be taken like that as well, adharma, instead of taking adharma. But it is only left to one's own um, judgment and also your own assessment in the context you are born today, as in swadharma, as one how. And again, when we are in doubt with this one, always go to the elders and the, um, your, your acharya or your teachers who can explain more about your swadharma. That is why in Krishna's, in this Gita's whole teaching, you will find nice pointers to this teaching, but one, one has to apply into that Swadharma and everything into a, into a more analytical of your own execution. Okay? So, so let, let's do the next one. <clears throat> Okay, Shiva, can you change it? Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Atake na prayukto yam. Atake na prayukto yam. Atake na prayukto yam. Papam charati purushaha. Papam charati purushaha. Papam charati purushaha. Anichanna pivashneya. Anichanna pivashneya. Anichanna pivashneya. Baladivani yojitaha. Baladivani yojitaha. Baladivani yojitaha. So Arjuna's TM, again, question here is very good. So Arjuna asks, hey, Vashneya, Vrishnikula. Uh, because Krishna was born in the Vrishnikula. So he is again adjective for Krishna. He Vashneya eh? Atha meaning to say um, the, Atha then, then after mm, Atha Apriyana that is something that you can say Atha I am Purushaha I am this Purushaha this, uh, Purushaha, this, this particular person this person, so it could be any person. I am Purushaha Anichanapi. Even if he doesn't want to go in the wrong path or in the Paradharma, in this case. Anichanapi Anichanapi Baladiva Balad Niyojita Iva Balad Niyojita As if he's 
forced from a force from inside niyojita eva that is being engaged into like in what bayojita eva ah kena prayuktah by as if what is that big factor that which is prayuktah pushing him into that kena prayuktah papam charati because arjuna understood paradharma bayavah we all know that one is going to give me bayam and narakam and everything but how come i then go and do this papam why am i why are people doing papam even though knowing that we don't want it anichanapi we don't want it but something inside me is pushing as if krishna you have def by default you have all programmed us to do only papam it is as if you are not why did you default uh, program us to do punyam then we can say my swabhavam is always to do punyam and some more i have gone into papam but it looks like arjuna you know, then arjuna is asking in uh, in treta uh, yugam uh, what is about in kali yuga ah uh, arjuna is asking treta yugam sir as if you are defaultly promo, uh, programmed us all as if into papam and that is what is pushing us all into that kena prayukta what is it that is driving us like this and so we dan the saraswati that's what you used to say that you know in um, left to oneself with no religion nothing to be there a man's wish should only go in two direction either it is immoral or illegal you would say so somehow we need this kind of a guidance to put it all into that one so why is it happening so is arjuna that's a question of arjuna and how do we recognize this so that we can correct it that bala is bala diva that's not bhagwan's creation that's very important to understand it is only arjuna's presumption that as if left to us oneself we are as if very comfortably we are able to go into papam but we have to get a lot of difficulty into do a punya why is this happening so bhagwan she is going to say but i will only define a bhagwan this one and then go uh, so you can chant just shri bhagwan uvacha shri bhagwan uvacha shri bhagwan uvacha i'm just going to sh share that now we going to define about bhagwan because this kind of a question normally can only be answered ex only by bhagwan because he knows because he is the creator of this particular one he would understand this more than anybody else in this um functional reality of what is happening in this world yes. so i'm going to go into the bashyam yes. yes. you can also really worthwhile by heart in this verse so we're going to define bhagwan we going to define bhagwan so then bhagwan is the one who understand this particular modus operandi in all these things and to give us the clear vision so that we can get more clarity and correct this one so uh, you can repeat after me shubham aishwarasya uh, samagrasya aishwarasya samagrasya aishwarasya samagrasya dharmasya yashasashriyah धर्मस्थ क्वालिटीज वॉट डिफाइन्स भगवान these three attributes is not observable in anybody in the world except bhagwan one aishwarya here aishwarya means lordship not this wealth as we normally call aishwarya here aishwarya that's why is called ishwara 
is called Ishwara because he has got the Aishwar. Because from Ishwara, he's got the Aishwarya. So the Lordship over this creation, he is the ultimate Lord. Prabhu, he is the ultimate Lord of everything. Aishwarasya. Uh, Samagrasya means it's again adjective of all put together in entirety of. So first is Aishwarasya. Second, Dharmasya. Of the righteous governance by which this whole world is uh, going. Mm. Of the Dharmasya and Yashasaha. All these are Shashti Bhakti. Huh? Yashasaha. Of the glorious. That Kirti. You know, the Kirti, that ultimate Kirti, that one who has got is the Bhagavan. One who has got the ultimate Dharma in him, he is the one who can correct the Dharma, he is Bhagavan. And Yashasaha. And Shriyaha. One who has got the ultimate wealth in the wealth of knowledge, every wealth in all directions. Shriyaha and Vairagyasya. Freedom from desire. He is the one who has got the ultimate Vairagyam. No one can equal to the Vairagyam of that Bhagavan. Atta Mokshasya. And he is the one who is ever liberated. He is ever liberated. He is never into the Clutches of Prakriti like anybody else. He is the only one. Even Jeevan Mukta because he is in the Prakriti. But only Bhagavan is ever liberated. Ever liberated. Shannam. These six attributes is a Bhaga Itingana. All this is by, by one which is known. Itingana is means by it. Itingana. Yeah, this is how is known to be for, for Bhagavan. And this, um, uh, this is all Bhashyam, okay? Aishwarvadi Shakkam Yasmin Vasudeve. So in these six clear, this six characteristics I said, is whom it is in Vasudeve, in that Bhagavan Mahavishnu, Nityam, Nityam Apratibandhatvena. Nityam Apratibandhatvena means Nityam Apratibandhatvena. Meaning to say, Pratibandha means there is an obstacle. No one can have lordship without any obstacle. Right? Even though he, one can say, I am the lord for um, again and again, I can be elected as the chief of anything, I can put my presidency back and but no, even that has got some uh, end. But for um, for Bhagavan, Apratibandhatvena, there is no obstacle for any of the six characteristics at any time. Nityam. Nityam Apratibandhatvena. He does not have any imp uh, impediments or obstacles at any time for all the six. And Samastyena, all of them equally, collectively. Not that one day Aishwaryam is stronger, but Dharma is a little bit here. Yashara's Kirti is because the Rakshas Ravana has come. Nothing like that. Everything is always equally and collectively. Chavartate, Nityam Apriti. Nityam apravandhatvena samasthena cha vartate. It exists. And why? Utpattim pranayam chaiva bhutanam agatim gatim. And in the creation and also in the pranayam, in the destruction, also chaiva bhutanam of the beings which are of all the beings agatim gatim. One which is going to be created, he knows who, what is the next janma of us when we will get moksha or when it is going in the next pralayam what is going to come and gatim the ones that are going to go in this particular yuga and in this one utpattim pralayam chaiva bhutanam agatim gatim veti he knows he is the only one who knows and he also knows the vidyam and avidyam of the knowledge and in the avidyam means of all the karmas also we can take this Avidya. Avidya is equal to here karma. So there is a knowledge and also from the actions. He knows the both of them. Cha Savachyo Bhagavaniti. This person is called the Bhagavan. Utpatyadi Vashayam Cha. So Utpatyadi Vashayam Cha. These are all uh, Adi Shankara Bhashyam just written there. So you know because it's very nice for Bhagavan's uh, uh, lordship and his qualities. Uh, in this uh, relating to this process of in the knowledge of creation, 
uh, because we will see in chapter number seven lot about um, his um, in the creation jnana vijnana yoga okay there he will say vijnanam yasya sa vasudevaha vachya bhagavan iti that indeed that vasudeva that va the word itself is for them that vachya in that what he is defined is the bhagavan iti so i'll just send you this one so it's very nice for you to again and again read and um, go into the particular meaning of um, bhagavan so that's why i want to share but uh, today it's just kind of uh, very much for us to go into 37 uh, and the next class we can do that and finish chapter 3 yeah that will be easy so we'll finish that um, next chapter and it is going to be a little bit maybe the next class i have to take an hour and a half because there are certain beautiful portion of karma yoga in the, in the next few verses they are very very nice for us to um, uh, again again think over so we will do that in the next class you have any doubt in the tm in the class we had today please you can welcome to us jayshri any doubt you are okay with that um, all all the sumati ji any ganapati ram and if you also find any more meaning in this um, uh, Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha from anywhere, uh, please let me know. Because um, there are different teachers, uh, even in today's context, because it is um, it has to be interpreted in a different way. But as I said, Swadharma is a very highly, uh, because there are today, um, Sri Dharma, Purusha Dharma is in question. Uh, what about Swadharma? So, you know, this is, um, everything is being where, um, uh, in a different perspective, but only one can uh, put it, put themselves in their own Rashtriya Dharma and the uh, Dharma in which they are, they are, they are, uh, to abide. that's all we can do about it. Okay. And that Swabhava, sorry, Jesse, you are saying that I can't hear you. Yeah. yeah, definition of Bhagavan is something that um, I am. I can understand what you said about uh, Bhagavan the, in that, but is Bhagavan within each individual or is Bhagavan something external? That's something that no, okay. I was thinking about. Okay, no, no. See, when we talk about Aishwaryam and um, you know um, all those ones, because they are in a relative perspective, that means Bhagavan is another person. Another person means he is up there. Okay, he is the one creator because we have talked about characteristics. But the Bhagawan in us, when we talk about it, it can also be talking in two words. Right? Like the same characteristics, there is no problem because that's ultimate bhakti. Bhagawan wants us to have when we when we take him in uh, inside us. But in the Advaita Jnana, when we say Atman, it is behind beyond all these characteristics because Atman is completely nirgunaha. All the three, all the six gunas, what we saw is all only a, a manifestation of it's a manifested Bhagavan. The manifested Bhagavan, Bhagavan in the manifested form. That person is we call with those characteristics. But when we say Antaratma, that Atman is purely a Nirguna Atman. He is beyond this particular, because the Atman and Paramatman are the, um, is the same uh, or no different. That's a Brahman. That's Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Hari Om. Namaste.